All right, what's up, guys? We are here with the first episode of 2023. Hope you guys all had a great new year. As you can probably tell if you're watching this on YouTube, there's no video because Will is in California right now, and I just Mm. didn't feel like having us do video when he's out of town (laughs) and him having to send me video files from California. (laughs) So that's why you can't see us. (laughs) Um, But we've got a really good episode for you guys today. Uh, We'll start off coming just talking about some upcoming paddle tech that I think a lot of you guys are going to want to be aware of. And then this episode is going to focus a lot on some paddle gate, grit gate stuff. NML Pickleball just recently wrote an article that kind of talked about pros using customized paddles. This is something I and Will have been aware of for quite some time, and we kind of wanted to chime our thoughts on it. So uh, we'll start off talking about some of these paddles quick, and then we will get into uh, the scandalous stuff. So anyways, (laughs) (laughs) the the first thing I just want to mention, and thankfully, Will, you've gotten to hit Uh, a couple of these now. Mm -hmm. So there's some good upcoming tech in paddles that everyone should be aware of, and they probably aren't uh, very much right now because companies aren't talking about it. But there's four companies, to my knowledge, that are using it. And some of them are using small variations, but largely the same thing. Mm. So 6.0 from Australia, Legacy, Carbon, Vatic Pro are all the companies, and they're basically doing these unibody frames for the paddle and then if you guys are familiar with a pickleball paddle if you take off the edge guard you would see the exposed polymer like you'd be able to see the core with thermoforming which is the technique they're using it actually seals all of that core off so if you took the edge guard off you would have an edgeless paddle and a lot of companies are either go ahead yeah i was wondering does have you have you taken apart the edge guard have you seen what it looks like because right now the way you're explaining it to me it I imagine it's just you take off the edge guard and somebody just put a bunch of glue. It's almost like it's like they put toothpaste all around the edge of the paddle. They just put the edge guard over on top. Is that what it's like or is it something more sophisticated? No, it looks like an edge guard that doesn't bleed into the face. Like So imagine kind of some of these kind of like a 003. It doesn't look exactly like that. Like there's a clear... Um, I guess, line where it changes from the surface to the sidewall. But I'll have to show you a picture later. I just don't, you know, one of the companies shared it with me, and I don't want to make it public for everyone. But it's just completely sealed off, either with carbon fiber or something else. I've heard different companies using different things. But then after that, companies will either inject foam into that thermoforming between that and the core, or they'll put it between the thermoforming and the edge guard. I don't know exactly who's doing which or whatever. But long story short, this makes the paddle significantly more durable. If you guys haven't seen the video I did on Instagram, I snapped a halo over my knee extremely easily. <laughs> How's your knee I feeling? I tried to break a carbon. <laughs> my, you know, my knee's doing great. This is a 5.0 plus knee, <laughs> and the knee's still lost. <laughs> I don't know about that, but <laughs> just kidding. But, yeah, I wouldn't have paddles, done it. <laughs> I uh, dude, I really didn't want. I'm not gonna lie. For 20 minutes on Discord, I was asking people like, "Do I do it?" And then I'd stare at the paddle. And I'm like, "Don't do it. If you break it, you're gonna feel so bad." And there was zero chance I was breaking that paddle. Mm. Wait, your paddle? It's funny though. It doesn't matter, I, dude. But it still feels bad. It feels like <laughs> I would rather give it to someone than just break the thing. This is true. All right, but yeah. So, anyways, long story short. These paddles are extremely durable. You're not going to ever snap one of these at the handle again, at least not in normal pickleball play. Uh, Sweet spots are improved. Spin on these paddles is crazy. It's basically just the next generation of raw carbon Uh, fiber paddles. And in my opinion, what what, what are you going to say? No, I mean, you say you're not going to snap it. I don't know. You give one to Tyson. Let's see if it, you know, No, did you see the person on my post? Well, what do you say? They said... Give this to Tyson and see if he can snap it. So I tagged him and said, Tyson, you want to try and snap it at MLP? Did he respond back? (laughs) I haven't seen if he's responded, but I'll bring it to MLP and ask him to snap it. I don't think he can snap it. Okay. 6-0 sent me a video Mm -hmm. of the owner like violently trying to snap it over his knee, and he could not snap it, and he's a bigger guy than I am. Mm, Okay. At, At that point, I'm like, even if you could break it over your knee with, you know, enough force, I'm like, you'll never break it in pickleball. Like, there's no way an overhead is ever going to have as much force as hitting it over your knee. I just imagine a bunch of people right now just going out there, eventually trying to prove you wrong, just so they can say that Chris (laughs) doesn't know what he's talking about. 
<laughs> you know what's going to happen? A bunch of people are going to be in the hospital. <laughs> oh, gosh. With Dude, broken can you knees. imagine? Can <laughs> no. you imagine Tyson tries to snap it before a match and he hurts his knee and can't play? Oh, yeah. I can already see the headlines now. Uh, first Pick quarter. Studio wiped out Tyson. No, no. It'd be more like... <laughs> It'd be more like first quarter of 2023. There's been a high, high level of knee replacement surgeries going on in the United States. We're here to find out why. It all stems from a man by the name of Chris Olsen <laughs> challenging people to snap paddles over his knee. I heard he's 3-5 at best. We'll come back to you on the, on the, next, on the next report. Back to you, John. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm just saying, man, if owner from Legacy and Six Zero and myself can't snap this paddle, I'm not going to say no one on earth can do it, but man, you you got to be pretty strong to do that, I'd say. Mm, okay. So um, I guess the only other thing I really have to say about that is since they're all using similar techniques, these paddles are all going to get great reviews from me. Um, they're going to you know come out at different intervals. Uh, the Legacy... Is very similar to the Carbon One X fourteen millimeter, but it's eighty dollars cheaper. So if anyone is considering the Carbon and you don't want to spend that much money, I'm telling you right now, that Legacy is really good. Like I wouldn't even hesitate to consider buying that Legacy. You got to hit it too, Will. What do you think? I've been playing with it for the past two or almost two weeks. It feels like, and I've been hitting it with heavily since I've been here in California. Um, went to the local courts. Oh, funny enough, I saw Jeff Warnick at the courts playing rec. I didn't get a chance to yeah, play that's him. Sick. Yeah, it was cool, but I was just like, this guy's really tall. And oh, look at the way he's holding his hand. Wait a second. That's Jeff. It's Jeff Warnick. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I just, I, I mean, I said what's up to him. But, anyways, yeah, I've been playing uh, with it. And yeah, no, it's, it's really really good i don't have troubles like recommending it at all and I, I put it in other people's hands they're like oh what's that and there's this guy here his name's lloyd pretty good player and he was playing with the, the original carbon or regular carbon one and i gave him the legacy yo i couldn't get that thing back from him <laughs> <laughs> i couldn't get it back from him um i mean so at this point would you I mean, obviously, you're, you know, grass is always greener type yeah. of guy. Would you, would you consider switching or no? I would consider switching, for sure. There's a few yeah. things that I would like to see. I still I still need to hit the Carbon 1 14 millimeter, but I, I have hit the Carbon 1 16 millimeter, and I remember it being good, but I didn't have that much time with it, so I need some comparisons. And also, it's not a big deal, um, but since I've been playing a lot with the Hyperion 14 millimeter, I... I've really gotten accustomed to that little bit longer sure. handle and not that the legacy, you can't do a two handed back in order that the handle is not sufficient, but um, it's just nice having, I think something about the comfort of knowing I have that longer handle. It just helps me. Um, sure. And that's really just about it. I would like to see a 14 millimeter legacy, just see what that um, would feel like or, you know, perform like. I a, would probably be one of the poppiest paddles you could buy because in my opinion the 16 millimeter legacy is identical to the carbon one 14 x really like it, it when i switch between them in singles hardly any difference i can notice in doubles i might pick up better difference you hit a more a bigger variety of shots but yeah i mean other than yeah. that no it's really good you can really hook it like it's just something it really spins really well you can really shape the ball i mean have you seen some of the clips i sent you there's some dudes who are just really oh they're just, disgusting and they look like they're i rafa and Nadal just banana whipping the the shots it's like around. breaking physics watching some of those clips i'm like this shouldn't be possible yeah i mean for you definitely not possible for me i'm like okay i can see that's a possibility but you know you're three five at best so <laughs> i mean of course these things are just completely mind-blowing to you so i'm going to the court just to prove you wrong i'm gonna hit that try and hit that shot until i get it it'll take you i don't know we'll be old and dead by that i don't know pickleball old might be dead, dead. By, by the time you're able to hit anything similar to what you've seen in some of those oh clips oh my god goodness <laughs> ridiculous this guy this okay. guy but, but yes. yeah so keep an eye on all those paddles guys six zero legacy vatic pro they all sell extremely reasonably priced paddles and that doesn't mean they're bad or cheap like they're extremely 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 competitive for their price 140 150 160 zero issue recommending them i think they beat you know it, it bumps companies like electrum down several notches i wouldn't even consider it after hitting these so 
Yeah. yeah. Good good praise for all of those companies. Keep an eye on them until uh, full reviews come out. Yes. But all right, Will. Yeah. Let's talk about what the people want to know, and that is Paddlegate, because this stuff is <laughs> New getting Paddlegate? out of hand. <laughs> Dude, it never ends. I guarantee you by the end of this year, if there is not an issue, a big issue similar to last year like Carbon had, mm-hmm. I'll be shocked. I, I mean, at that point, I'll know things are completely rigged in this sport. Yeah. So I'm sure most of you already know, last year, Carbon at the U.S. Open got banned for having too much grit. Uh, it was very hard for them to get reinstated, took a bunch of you know steps. Uh, they fixed it for the most part. Obviously, they're back. They've got new paddles. They're all in the clear now. But it was a pretty big blow to their company and a lot of the retail shops that held the, the paddles. So that was because of grit. So after that, I got curious, and I got to stare it, and I started testing paddles and you guys might even remember i was posting on my instagram story that i was doing this and then i stopped out of nowhere and i'm going to keep the details a little loose here but essentially Mm -hmm. i was threatened that if i published those results a company was going to sue me for publishing those results and i decided to not post them some people wondered if i was worried about you know angering companies and like not getting paddles no that wasn't a worry at all because just paddles still would have sent me paddles i only didn't publish it because it started take heading towards legal action and i was like i this is not worth it me publishing this does not do me any good if i'm just gonna land myself a lawsuit so yeah. basically dropped it after that and i kept checking paddles every time i would get a paddle i'd check it because i was curious there are a lot of pickleball brands failing that test right now some are 50 50 some are way over all the paddles i check brand new i had some companies eight paddles in a row would fail and i guarantee if i tested more they would all fail so it was it was a problem it it is definitely a big problem what was going on and i will you and i have talked to a number of pros they know it's an issue too yeah they do they'll even joke about it they'll hit (laughs) one of them will hit a shot and they'll go Oh, it's because that paddle's illegal. Look, they all joke about it. They know it's a thing. Yeah, no, they'll take it and they'll like pretend like they're filing their nails with it. It's like, oh, you know, it's like they just gave themselves a, a nice yeah. manicure, a pedicure. It's like, oh, good paddle. <laughs> yeah, like it, I don't know. It is a huge, huge problem right now. I've seen it myself. Um, PB&J, who's another YouTuber, he's a smaller guy. He does, he publishes all of his results and is not afraid, I guess, the one company, whatever, we won't get into it. But clearly he has not been challenged legally. So you can always check his videos if you want to see his results. But his and I results almost always line up perfectly. I actually don't know if we've had a paddle yet that didn't line up. So take that for what it's worth. Mm. Um, But I guess I I skipped ahead a little bit. I want to talk about that NML article. Yeah. Will, you saw it first. What was your reaction to it? Uh, So it was... I wasn't too surprised about it because it was posted earlier um, or earlier than, than we're talking about it now. It was a couple of months ago, right? It was talked that it, it was a post on one of the forums and they said that a person who works at a pickleball facility got a hand on, uh, what was it, Catherine Parento's like personal paddle and they saw that. Oh, was- that wasn't even a month ago. That was like... Like weeks ago. That was weeks ago? Oh, gosh. Yeah. I think everything moves in pickleball so fast. And I thought it was kind of strange because if, if it were true, right? I, I didn't well, think to much clarify of it. for people, basically this guy made a post that said he got a hold of Catherine's personal paddle. Mm-hmm. And then he said it was extremely gritty and that it was raw carbon fiber for and, certain. And we, we didn't know, have any pictures or anything, but yeah. he said it was way grittier than a normal paddle tech, which if you've ever held one, they're smooth, very they're, smooth. They're smooth. They're made out of fiberglass. The paddle tech hasn't come out with a new paddle in quite some time, and I don't know if they're yeah. in the works of making something else. Nothing's been officially teased or announced, anything like that, but they're made out of fiberglass. Fiberglass is typically fairly smooth for the most part. There is a little bit of texture on some of them. I know Engage has some texture on some of their fiberglass paddles. But anyways, they don't make a carbon fiber face. And so if this uh, post was true, it would mean that Catherine Prince was playing with a different type of paddle that isn't, you know, I guess, aware for the public or, or for public to purchase. And it's not that big of a deal because, I don't know, in, in, in tennis, right, all the pros don't play with 
the paddles that are that are open to consumers, right? They play with something purely custom. So I didn't think of it as that big of a deal, but I, I don't know. It seemed so, something seemed off about it because if you're going to make it, you know, I don't know, you should probably announce it or it still needs to be approved, right, by USAP. Well, that's how I view it is the rules. I don't know exactly how it works in tennis. Obviously, we know in every sport, golf, tennis, whatever, they all have custom equipment. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. But in pickleball, every paddle is supposed to be on the approved list. Even if you change a graphic, you add some grit, whatever, it's supposed to be added to the list. And you can clearly tell that isn't happening. I know for a fact that isn't happening. I have spoken to companies that have told me this is happening, that wow. these pros have a custom paddle that no one can buy, and it is not like the original one. So I absolutely know for a fact that that is a thing. And I just think people know they're cheating, I guess. like With, with how the ways it's set up, you're not supposed to have a custom paddle without it being on that list. Yeah. If you put it on the list and just don't sell it, whatever. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Look at the 002A that James uses. Mm -hmm. It's you can't buy that, but James can use it. Mm -hmm. So it's like I don't I don't know why people wouldn't just do that unless some of the paddles have not only have they been custom, maybe they've also been illegal. I have heard from some very reliable sources, like highly highly reliable, that some of these paddles these pros are using have been quite illegal over the grit okay um and i've even had questions um actually i'll leave that one out just in case that gives anything away we'll leave that out for <laughs> okay now. <laughs> <laughs> you, you gotta you gotta you gotta keep you keep the sources safe you know what i'm saying <laughs> um <laughs> but anyways with the article that nml wrote it just named coop and Catherine. they didn't know about anna lee and it sounds like there's a possibility that Coop and Catherine have been using a raw carbon fiber paddle, and someone did some digging for me, and there's actually a picture of Coop, I think from the PPA that she won with Vivian David, Okay. and I sent this picture to you, David, or uh, David. <laughs> David, not, who's David? that? What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> Will, yes. I sent this picture to you, and you can very clearly see on that paddle that it looks exactly like raw carbon fiber dust on the paddle, like paddle text. Don't do that. Yeah, it was pretty surprising to me. Yeah, it, it did look like it. Uh, not like a lot. And I'm trying to think if I've played with any other fiberglass paddles that, you know, are uh, like just black or dark to see to, yeah. to remember if they also, you know, leave a residue. And sometimes they leave like a little bit. But yeah, this one just, it really does look like it's... Well, it's to even test fiber. it, Mm -hmm. Again, you know, just from one picture, I can't can't prove it one way or another. Right, exactly. But I took a ball in my house, found the dustiest shelf I had, and I rolled that ball in dust. And then I smacked, like, overheads on the ground as hard as I could to see if I could get that pattern to show up on my paddle deck. And it wouldn't show up. Okay. So, again, that's that's not exact science. I, I should bring it to a court and yeah, try it that way. a lot. P play, yeah, play it for a while. But regardless, to me, it definitely seems like it's raw carbon fiber. And Paddletech said for a while they're working on it. So more than likely, Paddletech is giving this to their pros and saying, hey, try this out. I guess it just gets weird when it's not on the approved list. I think that's the only problem, right? Yeah. It's not on the approved and list. And it's tricky too, right? Because I think the PPA... I mean, they kind of follow whatever rules they want. Like, maybe the pros are asking the PPA, like, hey, I've got this paddle... You can test it or whatever. Can I use it? And they're just saying yes, right? Like, they don't have to do anything that USAP says. So yeah. maybe anything with the PPA, who knows? There's a there's a huge lack of transparency yes. right now. I think that's my biggest problem it, with it, just the lack of transparency and in, in what's going on. Because, yeah, I'm totally fine with it as long as as long as it's on the approved list and people know about it, right? Um, it could just be, I don't know, Paddletech just, if, if, if it were true, if Paddletech just wants to not go through the hoops of getting something approved and selling it out to the public. And this is an easy way to for the pros to market some paddles, you know, for the consumers, yeah. right? Without yep. them having to do much more work. I mean, I don't know how paddle tech sales are going or if that's working as a sales strategy, but totally right. could see that as a possibility. No, without a doubt, I could. Um, 
But yeah, so that's the article. Now, I just kind of want to get people up to speed on kind of how this whole grit thing works because I definitely have a lot of other thoughts about this whole thing. So the Starrett meter, the Starrett SR160 is the device that the USAP recommends to test grit on paddles. Mm -hmm. So how you're supposed to use it is you need to measure in the center of the paddle six different directions with the meter. So it's north-south, east-west, and then it's the, like, top right corner and then the bottom left corner are the directions that you measure in. You do those six, flip the paddle over, do the same six, and then you average out the results from both sides. And now the numbers you can't go over are 30 on the RT scale and 40 for the RZ scale. Mm -hmm. I don't understand those scales enough to to explain to you what RT and RZ mean, but essentially it's just measuring how deep the peaks and valleys of the grit are. And if it's too high, that's a bad thing because it generally means you can impart more spin on the ball. Okay, so that's how you get your result. The SR160 is known to have about a 5% variance. The PPA is accounted for this. I believe if you challenge a pro, you are allowed to go 5% over 40 and 30. And I've even potentially heard recently that USAP does the same thing. But I was originally told by many reliable sources that that was not the case. So I honestly have no clue what USAP is doing. But I can tell you right now, Will, Mm -hmm. from my testing, even if that's true, a ton of paddles fail. A ton, a ton, a ton, (laughs) a ton of paddles fail even with that variance alone. No, I remember when you were, (laughs) I guess, waking up at 6 a.m. and going to whatever local shop you were at, and I would call you and like, what are you doing? And you'd be like, I'm I'm testing paddles. And then I'd call you later around lunchtime. He's like, what are you doing? It's like, I'm still testing paddles. I was like, man, you were going at it. I don't know how many paddles you tested, but it must have been a lot. Well over 100. Well, well over 100. Okay, okay. And And sometimes I would check them twice just to see how the result would hold up. And even with the variance, most of the time the results would be close, but the Starrett is definitely not, you know, perfect. It's I think there's probably a better device to use. Um, but hey, that's that's what USAP says to use right now. So mm-hmm. we that's what I've been using as well. So to me, it was really alarming how many paddles were failing. And I mean, well, you and I, we won't name them, but. Th- Everyone might know what paddle I'm talking about, but you and I have felt a specific paddle, mm-hmm. and when you hold it in your hand and rub your hand rub your hand on it, it's literally the grittiest thing I've ever touched. And it was almost over fifty on the <laughs> RZ. Was it? Yeah, over, almost over fifty on the RZ scale when I tested it. Yeah, like that's just cr- and that was a consumer facing paddle. Paddle. Mm-hmm. Yes, not even like, one of the pros have. So it's just it just shows you like what's possible that what the pros can be playing with. And to be fair, you know, when we have been around some, we do know that uh, a lot of pros get custom batches where it's right on that legal line. I'm sure some are over. I would have almost no doubt about it. But I know some of them are put right at the line so that if they do get tested, it's like, okay, they're at least within the, they're at the highest they can achieve while still being legal. That's also a thing. Know that for a fact. Had some pros say that to us. Mm-hmm. It makes sense yeah. to do that, right? Like you, if, if you're a professional and you want peak performance out of your equipment, then yeah. you would have the manufacturer send you some that they've tested, so that the pros can be confident that they're playing with yep. whatever is the best available to them. Will hopefully yep. also that stays within legal limits, right? Yeah, N- definitely. And you know that I don't even have a problem with. I if the if they want to make the grit where it's right on the legal limit as high as it can possibly go, I'm that doesn't bother me. You're not breaking any rule. In fact, that's what everyone should be getting in theory. You're just, you know, you want to be extra careful for the pros not to get in trouble. Right, exactly. Especially if the pros can challenge each other, which I don't know if that happens all that much, right? I think around it carbon. Doesn't. You want to know why? Gate happened, but it didn't really happen after. No, why? Why? So I talked to another, another pro. Well, I talked to a couple pros about this, actually. So when remember when Anna Lee challenged Paris after she lost? Do you recall that? Yeah, I did. What was Paris playing with at the time? She was playing with a Yola, and I believe that's the only challenge that's happened so far to my knowledge. Anna Lee after that loss got ridiculed by everyone because they were like, "Oh, what a sore loser! You challenged her paddle because, of course, you think it's the paddle and not your own lack of skill." Or like people were were pretty ruthless about it, which is. That's kind of in my opinion ridiculous. Yeah, because yeah. it's part of the rules. There's nothing wrong with that. If anyone wants to challenge yeah. it, let her challenge it. And we just came fresh off of 
carbon gate, right? Like barely. Hundred percent. Yeah. I I would have challenged it too, even if even if I it wasn't positive. Like, but with a raw carbon fiber paddle, for sure, I'm challenging that thing. So that to me was only smart. But I talked to a number of pros, and there's a couple reasons. One, a lot of them know this is an issue, and they just don't want to be the one that like brings it up and then. You know, I guess everyone uh, gets upset about it. A little also, stigma. they don't want to be the one getting ridiculed by everybody. For challenging, yeah. Man, so you know, <laughs> the the pickleball community sometimes, at least I guess the pros can be pretty, pretty ruthless. I would say, <laughs> yeah. It's I don't know. It to me, I think there should be no you challenge to test. I think every paddle should just be tested. Why would you not keep it fair the whole entire time? You mean tested like. Before the tournament, tested before the match. Okay. Oh, yeah. tested before the well, match. No, do it. Do it before every match. Every. I mean, okay, that might be difficult. You would need yeah. a lot of stairs. There's a lot of courts happening, but at the very least, quarterfinals, every single paddle is getting tested before the match. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Something. There, I mean, there why, has to be why some make, sort of change? Why put it on the player to challenge when it should just be on the organization to make sure that everyone's following the rules? It's true. Well, I think. I remember reading a part in uh, NML articles like saying that why would the organization challenge it? Because what what does that do for them, right? Because some of these paddle companies are the sponsors, are probably paying right. you know, money to these organizations to, to run. So that's a conflict of interest yep. right there. Like really, aside from, I guess, ethical fairness, right? Yep. What and why would you challenge it, right? There's no real incentive yeah. to do that. And the only incentives people have is for the pros, the players that are actually competing in these tournaments because things need to be fair, things need to be transparent, or it just feels like you got shafted. And when money's on the line and with the prize pools increasing and you know, with PPA merging with MLP and everything else that's going on, um, the wins and the money matters, right? And yeah. so it just kind of sucks. It just feels like the players who are competing, the pro players, are kind of getting shafted a little bit. Yeah, no, without a doubt. It, I think it's, the whole situation's kind of crazy, and if I were some of these pros that didn't, you know, have these advantages at my disposal, it would be, uh, it would be pretty annoying, I think. Right. Um, I mean, like, look at, yeah, uh, Nick, <laughs> look at, what you got, right before Carbon Gate, you know, I guess, uh, was it Ben Johns, right? <laughs> when he was starting to lose to J-Dub or whatnot, and then, the whole carbon thing happened, and then J Dub couldn't play with carbon because I think he was winning, right? He he was beating him, right? And then Ben Johnson he was, was still definitely doing with the... very well. He almost won U.S. Open with it. Ben did beat him there, mm. but it was close, right? Exactly. And so I don't know. It's I know I think it's part of the sport, right? Like equipment matters, right? At least yeah. at that level. And it, this just needs to be really, really just needs to be more transparent. So if it's transparent and everybody's aware of it and everybody has access to essentially the same tier or level of equipment and everybody else knows about it, then I think it's perfectly fine. But to keep things, I don't know, kind of shady, it just, it makes you question things and you don't want to question the results. You don't want to question your own performance or your own results. That just, that just right. kind of sucks. It's not good for the sport. Yeah, definitely. So one thing I want to talk about real quick is just kind of uh, an overview of all of this, like how are companies getting around this? How are illegal paddles being sold? Mm -hmm. Yada, yada, yada. So the first thing that I want to bring up, and again, I know this one for fact because I know a company that's done this and possibly a few others, but I know for absolute 100% certainty one company that's done this. And if they've done it, then you already know other companies were doing it before them. So what they do is if they have a raw carbon fiber paddle, mm -hmm. they will submit a less gritty version of the paddle. It's more smoothed out. The comp the Chinese companies literally give you this as a choice when you are making those samples to be sent to USAP for approval. Do you want to send in one that's for sure going to pass? And you can do that. And I have felt it with my hand, and I have stare tested it. It will pass without a problem. Mm -hmm. So you submit that. It goes and passes. Okay, you're through the clear now. If you're a, a smaller company... You're never getting checked again. I guarantee it. Unless you blow up, you're never getting checked again. Um, you know, pros, obviously getting custom paddles like we talked about. So there's that. Um, and then, okay, I already mentioned that. A number of pros are measured right at the legal limit for their paddles. Mm -hmm. So as far as just getting approved, that's what's happening. And then after that, they get mass produced with the better grip. Because the consumers obviously want 
good spin, right? Like that's been a huge focus in the last year. And I think having my RPM test probably hasn't done that any favors necessarily. People see a paddle and go, oh, that's <laughs> 1300 versus like 1600. That's a pretty big difference. I wait, don't really want wait. that one. So if- <laughs> I just, just want to throw this out there. Have you ever uh, came across someone who's referenced your list and they got that paddle and then they like come up to you or mention to you somewhere like this paddle doesn't get that much spin or it's it's not that great for spin and then you like go look at them hitting and they just have a stroke or poor technique that can't generate any spin whatsoever so i have not had it where someone has told me my the result on my spreadsheet did not line up i've actually only ever heard that it does line up i'm sure there's someone out there who you know maybe disagrees or whatever but for certain, I have seen people when you look at them, you're like, ah, you can. The grid is not the reason you can't spin that ball. <laughs> <laughs> That's I've seen that more often than not, and I don't know. I think it's kind of funny. Yeah, no, but I don't I have the heart to tell them. Make, yeah, you're like, ah, oh, whatever. You're like, you probably just need a higher one. Higher grid. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna say just that kidding. next time somebody ever asks oh, me that. Oh god, that'd be so bad. I <laughs> wouldn't do that. Um, but yeah, it's just. It's all a mess. It's so easy for companies to get around that approval process. And I know the USAP says, oh, we do this secret Santa shopping thing where we randomly test paddles. And it's like, okay, but you, I'm telling you right now, they don't test every single paddle. I, there are some paddles talking to people that they just know are so blatantly illegal and somehow they're still not getting caught. If this many independent sources can be saying there is this issue, Mm-hmm. How does USAP not find any result that's similar? Right. There's just no way. No, it's it's true. It's true because even if these independent sources are, you know, quote unquote unreliable, like the truth always lies somewhere, you know, in the middle, right? And for USAP yes. to not say or do anything for as long as they have, it just, it doesn't feel good. And I don't think it's any secret that, I guess, you know, for the paddle testing institution or part department of USAP that it's not very well liked or received by, I guess, you know, the community at large, I feel like. It's, I don't know, it's bad. I I want them to start doing something. You know, it's like, it just, from out here, it feels like they're not doing anything about it. I'm sure they are. My honest guess is the situation has gotten so out of hand that they they would have to wipe out so many brands to neutralize it or they have to say we messed up we allowed this to happen and now they look bad like there's it's a a lose lose in that situation right they don't know what to do like i if i was in their position and if all these things were true like i wouldn't know what to do either you know and yeah it's kind of i don't know maybe it's kind of up to the companies to just try and all play fair or you know push the the line a little bit and not go over it so much but ah uh, it's yeah it's i think it's really only tough to say as much as pickleball is focused on ethics community and all those things anytime money comes in that's gonna change and that's we're, we're already seeing it's changed clearly right i wouldn't be surprised if i don't know the next year i mean some good paddles are coming out right and some things are changing and I don't know, USAP needs, needs to, to be more robust in their testing or with some of the things that they do. Um, just or the be, rules just got to change. Yeah, or the rules just got to change because somebody is going to figure out something crazy with a paddle that's really yeah. just going to be kind of game-changing. I mean, we're already seeing it now, limited with some of these new paddles that are coming out, even with some of the new paddles that we know that come out are that are illegal that you can't play in sanctioned tournaments like you know like the diadem vice or the yeah. you know some of the other pals that you're also using eva foam um yep and someone is going to figure out some sort of technology combination or process to make some of these things legal quote unquote by being able to pass some of the tests that are implemented yeah. by usap and it's going to it's it's going to i think it's going to change the game in a lot of ways you know, well, you you know what makes me laugh about this whole thing? People always say, "Oh, it doesn't matter what paddles the pros use; they'll beat anyone with any paddle." I am telling you right now, when I talk to these pros, and even just with these pros who are clearly using custom paddles, it matters. The grip matters. The pop matters. All of these things at that level matter 
a lot to these people. Yes, they matter. Of course they matter. How could how could they possibly think that it doesn't matter when they're competing against their peers that are also at similar skill level? Because you're looking for the differentiator. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If everybody's so good. Of course it doesn't matter if they're playing against you, Chris, or, you know, <laughs> <laughs> probably me. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> because their skill level is just a tier or two above. But when they're playing... Like I said, against their peers, they're competing against their peers. They're looking for the best equipment that suits their game. So, of course, it matters. Anybody who says that it doesn't matter at that level is just, no. Nah. It makes no sense. It, I mean, it just, no. if you gave a pro a paddle that had grit as high as 80 RZ, yeah. it would break the game. If you took a top 10 player... I'm willing to bet you they're number one in the world if they use that paddle. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about number one, but yes, they'll be ranking. They'll um, be turning some heads. I'd say number one, man. I, you you know that paddle we used. The <laughs> one I'm talking about, that was 60. That one was 60 RZ. Imagine going another 20. How busted that would be. Yeah, no, it'd be pretty, it'd be pretty ridiculous. Not going to lie. Dude, I could... I, I literally... Oh man, I, that paddle was so much fun. That was just absolutely bonkers hitting that thing. I still it, think for anyone's. <laughs> go ahead. No, I, I, I'm just thinking. I'm still thinking. All right, just a hypothetical experiment. Would you go for um, higher like RZ like spin potential like when you when you play, or would you play with um, an EVA foam paddle like like one of the Ronbis or the Vice paddle from Diadem? Like which one would you pick? For me, I would go with higher spin, mm. just because I. I, at the level I'm playing, I don't think the extra power would help me as much as the spin would. Oh, really? No, I'd go for the EVA yeah. foam paddle. Would you really? Yeah. All we right. Sh we should. We should. <laughs> maybe we could do a match. We'll find the Dude, two. Dude, we most, should do that. We find the most two illegal paddles, and we'll play. It'll be the opposite spectrums of like the no, paddle dude. I'll play with that. I'll play with the high that high grip paddle we're talking about, and you play with the vice, and we see who wins. Okay, I'm down. It'll be hilarious. That would be sick. That would be really <laughs> funny. <laughs> I love that idea. That's kind of fun. I I have heard that some pros are actually starting to be, um, actually no, I'm not gonna say that either. No. <laughs> so you're <laughs> we'll too safe, Chris. Out. Just to say it. Nah. No. No. Got to keep. Got to keep the the sources safe. I appreciate these people. Oh. <laughs> um, but anyways, here at the end of the day. These are some of the things that I think either need to happen or change in general. So first of all, I've heard over and over and over and over and over mm -hmm. for at least the last year that USAP at the top is very dodgy. There's a lot of shady practices that go on up there. I don't know exactly what, mm -hmm. but I hear it from everyone. There is not anyone who I've talked to that's like, oh, yeah, yeah. they're great. Like nothing wrong ever happens up top. So I think there's clearly some corruption going on. I don't know what, but I think that's for sure. I even gave my results to USAP mm -hmm. and I was just written off. Like I said, I think this is an issue. You guys might want to be aware. That's all I said. And I just got written off as like, oh, you're just an online blog or you're just a YouTuber. Like you don't really know what you're doing. And I tried very hard to be as thorough as possible. I yeah. talked to two different companies about how to use the Starrett. I talked, I showed them how I was doing it, made sure I was doing it right. All of them said, yeah, in our lab, this is exactly what we would do to make sure we were compliant as well. I made sure that the device was calibrated. I even calibrated it with one of them on the phone. Like, I would try to be as thorough as possible. I'm sure I'm not as thorough as the lab they're using. I'm sure they have way higher, you know, strict ambient temperature, yada, yada, yada. But I tried my best. So uh, to just be written off after giving some results is like, oh, you're just a blog. Yeah. I'm like, what? You're you not going to take who anything I, I said serious? <laughs> I'm the like, Well, studio. I wouldn't go that far. I know, I know. I, know. I wouldn't go that far. That's just me just, translating what's going on in your head right now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. So, I don't know. I thought that was weird. Just like, I, I don't care. You can tell me. I don't know, Just give me a good reason why. But just to, it just felt like an insult, I guess, which. Is yeah. Like, yeah. To written it I don't off. Know. I don't know. Yeah. No, I, I feel that same way because you're trying to bring value to the community into, you know, a structure institution that, you know, that you love, that we love and we're passionate about. And to see that passion just to be, you know, like I said, brushed off kind of doesn't feel good. Feels bad because you're really just trying to help. And I get it. Yeah. Yeah. And it sucks. And what's annoying, I guess, to me is there's one other company I know as well that absolutely for certain knows their paddles are out of spec and they just don't care. Yeah. So when uh, when one of the companies knows 
and I know it because it was one of the paddles that every single one of them failed in my test. Mm-hmm. I'm like, dude, what more do you need? Obviously, USAP doesn't know that that owner knows and thinks that, but I'm like, dude, how does everyone know this but you guys? Like, every single person knows they're out of spec by you. <laughs> Uh, it's, I, it's I think crappy. at the end of the day, mm-hmm. USAP just needs more transparency. Whether there's a 5% allowance that they give or not, be more transparent about the test. Maybe publish some of the results. You could shut everyone up if you just showed some of the results in your lab. Maybe you post a video. I don't know. But to me, and you can tell mm-hmm. me what you think, Will. Yeah. I think there's a lack of transparency on purpose. So that they cannot be called out when something does go wrong. If you don't know how they do things for certain, mm-hmm. you can't call them out for doing it wrong. Yep. I totally agree with that statement. And I think that they should put out an open test, right? And maybe not, you know, because it's it's hard to enforce or just, you know, destroy like a paddle brand or company, right? Because that's, if, if, if they were... If, if their results were similar to yours, right? And yeah. they did things like the carbon ban, right? Yeah. It would really just destroy a lot of companies. But yeah. I think that if you just kind of posted your results, you could almost like let the public kind of decide. Because as soon as you go to a tournament, right? You see the paddle they're using and you know on the list that it's illegal. You're going to be kind of publicly ridiculed you know or you know there's an asterisk yeah. to your win and that's not going to feel good and then that social pressure might be enough for you to change your your paddle to a com- to a company or to a paddle that is you know approved and you can kind of let i don't know the social pressures kind of do its own work like let that do the the job for you instead of you're the one trying to enforce it but i don't know that's just an idea I can only imagine the absolute mess that would cause socially because <laughs> You're there are so with, many paddles I, I lost right to now. somebody with a cheater paddle. <laughs> People wouldn't even know what paddle to use anymore. That's how many of these paddles I've tested have failed. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's through the roof. And again, some of them are right on the line. Like, you know, if you test them a couple times, maybe they'll pass or fail. They'll kind of flip-flop back and forth or whatever. But... I don't know. It's just such a such a big problem. And I just so people know, I, for the most part, don't plan to consistently publish any results in my reviews on Grit because, again, I'm not the lab. I'm not USAP. I don't have any final say on this. If USAP says it passed, well, I guess it passed. And that's on them if they had a lack of judgment or whatever. Like, I don't feel like it's up to me to try and figure that out. And if they clearly didn't want to listen or care about anything I had to say, then, yeah, I don't know. Let them figure it out. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. We'll just tell you what the RPM numbers are and if the paddle's good and worth the money. <laughs> and that's actually one reason I should have mentioned this earlier. That's one reason I did want to start talking about this because so another reason that carbon this surface is so tricky talking to people is that it's just hard to work with. So it's hard to get a consistent level of grit on these paddles. So if you do something wrong just a little bit, you can have a grit that's too high or too low. And even just in paddles I've received, I've noticed, you know, varying levels of grit. Some are high, some are low. Like, it's hard to say. Um, Mm -hmm. And with that, if it's hard to work with the paddle, that's why you're seeing some go over and some go under. So I think that that part is just kind of tricky. And anyways, the whole reason I said that. In my RPM test, I've noticed certain raw carbon fiber paddles, when they do have an illegal result, they get great spin. And it's really hard to want to reward those companies or like, you know, just say they had a great RPM number when you know there's a problem with the paddle, right? Right. It's It's almost like like you have to put an asterisk. Yeah, it just gets tricky. So that's kind of why I wanted to mention it. Again, I don't know how much I'm going to do with this in the future. It's just really dicey territory. I think legally it gets into some some weird areas that I just don't really want to get into. So don't necessarily expect it from me anytime soon. But mm. anyways, well, there's a couple more things with this I just want your take on. Yeah. So at this rate, the PPA owns essentially all the top talent in the game, and they can make whatever rules they want. I wonder how long USAP is even going to be relevant for. Mm. Tough to say. I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. That's interesting. Yeah, you, so you're saying like PPA could just set up their own rules because they have all the top players competing or whatnot and then that 
they could kind of become the new governing body. Yeah. They could just say, here's the paddles that we allow to be legal. Like, imagine this. I could totally, not necessarily this exact example, but along this lines, imagine the PPA is like, we don't care if you use, use EVA foam. And now every amateur is like, oh, well, then I'm going to go buy a diadem vice because it's a sick paddle. And now the, the, a, the USAP starts to lose even more traction because people buy these paddles, can't use them there. I can use them at PPA. Well, I'm not going over there anymore. I'll just play here. Hmm. Yeah, I could see that. But also, I guess I just don't know the relationship between like all the different institutions and what money is, you know, exchanging hands and for what reason. So, you know, you have to weigh the pros and cons, right? There's opportunity cost of, you know, doing something like this. Because then if you do become the governing body, then, um, you know, you got to start doing your own enforcement and, and hiring people yeah. to do some of the tests and um i guess uh control like, like, who does damage control like you know pr stuff if, if things get out of hand and that's just a lot of work and i don't know if ppa or mlp or whatnot want that to be their job right now as they're trying to build a product yeah. for the consumers and growing pickleball and the product right so I don't think that's yep. going to happen anytime soon. They might start making tweaks and changes that benefit them and their products. But as of right now, and maybe even within the next couple of years, I still don't see that happening anytime soon. But they might sure. have enough leverage now, you know, um, to talk to USAP so that USAP, you know, makes changes and, and potentially influence them. I think the, the more um, likely route is that if they wanted to, they could influence USAP to make rules or changes so that it benefits their tour, right? Yeah. And, you know, because if you already have somebody doing the work for you, you just try your best to make the tweaks so that it works best for everybody. So that's that's my take on it. Yeah. No, that makes sense. I'll be very curious to see where it goes. I Like I said, I just think there's no way a Paddlegate scandal doesn't happen this year with how many bad paddles are floating out in the wild, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And I think the last thing thought I had is, here's the thing, with all these pros on the PPA, even if they're using an illegal paddle, do we really think the PPA would call them out publicly for it? Highly doubt it. Let's let's just say it was Ben Johns, just because it's the most obvious example. It's kind of like yeah, you know, the the face of the PPA. If he had an illegal paddle, do you really think PPA is going to punish him for it? No, highly doubt it. Highly, <laughs> highly doubt. No, he's not. I just, so I, I think there's just, it's a lot of conflict of interest on every single aspect of this entire thing. If at this point people aren't convinced that stuff, shady stuff is going on, I don't know what will convince people. It's for sure happening. Whether the accusations of specific players are true or not, I have no idea. But there's a couple of them that I do know for fact. And we'll we'll see if the organizations figure something out. I'm not I'm not convinced they will, but yeah, I will uh, I will feel like I did my part at least talking <laughs> about it a little bit. All right. Yes, we appreciate you and honor you for your, the service that you're providing to our community, Chris. Thank you. Well, we're we're trying. We're trying. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's all I've got. I don't know if you have any other thoughts or things you want to chat about quick, but um, that's what I got. I think the only thing I want to chat about, guys, is that if you're listening to this right now, thank you for listening. Make sure you leave a five-star review wherever you listen to your podcast if they allow you to leave a review. Some exciting stuff is coming in the works for the rest of 2023 for us. Uh, I know the last few episodes have been pretty equipment and paddle heavy, but we hope yeah. to get some more varied, varied content in the next coming months, having some guests on the, on the pod and uh, talking yep. more about... Um, strategy and uh, gameplay because you know that's what we're here for and i mean aside yep. from all this crazy paddle stuff when we love gear over here at the pickleball studio and my, my me myself but we do love playing and having fun and just remember it's 2023 get your friends and family out there to play have a good time yeah thanks for listening guys we'll see you later see you